Hey Jesus Church family, welcome to yet another Sunday service. You are about to hear a word that was preached at our Pretoria campus right here in Pretoria North. And as you know, we are in the year of increase. So we are doing all things increase. We are asking the Lord to increase himself in us and in so doing, increase us with him. So I'm not going to take much time. I just have one thing to ask from you. If this word touches you, share it with someone else. Take this, help us be at the Lord's hands and feet, partner up with us at Jesus Church, and let's spread this good news of the gospel to other people. So share with your friends and family, and we will see you after this word. God bless you. We are not going to rush. This is very important. Gentlemen, let's greet the ladies in the house. <laughs> Hallelujah. The wonderful women. It's Women's Month. It's the last Sunday of the Women's Month. Amen. Hallelujah. I hope every woman feels special and feels greeted this morning. Amen. We thank God so much for this time. I was just saying to Sister, you can just continue and, and, and continue. I felt like she should just continue. Amen. Amen. I greet you in the wonderful name of Jesus again. Amen. Amen. It is a pleasure and a good thing to come to God's house. Amen. Amen. Why? Because we get everything here. Amen. The only place where you can be yourself. Do you know why? Even if you decide to pretend <laughs> to be somebody else, in God's house, God sees you. Amen. Amen. God is here. His presence is here. There is no point in you pretending to be somebody else. We can do other things at work, anywhere else, and people may not know us, or we may hide other things, but before God, there is nothing to hide. Amen. That's why David says, who is you know, my men that you, should, you are so mindful of. Amen. There's a scripture that I wanted to quote. It actually says, where can I go away from the presence of the Lord? No way. Yes. You can never hide. So that's the only place that we can be ourselves. And I like it because I know, which before God, I can never pretend. Amen. Eh? Even if I'm not happy and I come here, yeah, God knows that there's something in Musa that's not right. Amen. And he knows how to sort it out. Amen. Amen. We are in a season. Amen. The last month, or the last week of the women's month. Amen. Amen. The eighth month of the year. Amen. A year of increase. Amen. Amen. It's not too late for God to do something in our lives. Amen. It's not too late for God to increase us even in the season. Amen. Why? Because he's in the business of doing something new in our lives. Amen. This is a month of new beginnings. Amen. It's the last week of new beginnings. Eight represent the new beginnings. Amen. Something can still happen in your life in the last week, in the last week of the month of new beginnings. Amen. Amen. Remember, our God is not limited by time. Amen. God is a God who honors his promises. Amen. Whatever we believed God for as we entered 2024, he's still able to do it because we are still here. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, this month, our focus has been order my steps. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And uh, I was wondering what to share. Uh, until uh, I, 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 I got to a point where I maybe I need to speak about the fact that as we walk in the Christian walk, we are not going to experience everything smooth. Some of us, when we got to know Christ, we thought to put all the other issues in our lives would just disappear. You thought to put when when you get into a place, people just listen to you because of who God is in your life. But you find that when we walk this walk, there is always things that come to distract us. There is always the resistance. Can I tell you why? Can I tell you why? Yes. And I want you to know this. The reason why there is always resistance in the struggles that you have had in the past is because the devil is not happy that you made a decision Amen. to come to Christ. Amen. He is not worried about whoever is not in Christ anymore. Amen. That's why you see some of the people or your friends that are not saved, everything that seems smooth in their lives. Why? Because the NI is not worried about those. When I have taken a decision to go against the kingdom of the devil, now you will find that there will be a lot of stumbles. Amen. This is human flesh. We are not in heaven. We are on earth. We meet a lot of stumbles. But one thing that I want to tell you today is that you will stumble. You may stumble. Let me not say you will. Will is not a right word. You may stumble. But as you stumble, 
you will not fall. Amen. As you stumble, you will not be utterly destroyed. That's one thing, that's a message of hope that I want to give all of us here. That even in your battles, in your challenges, in everything that the enemy tries to bring in your way, just know that victory is certain. Why? Because God is a God of victory. He declares the beginning, the end from the beginning. He has declared that we are victorious. There is no point for us to worry about the stumble. Amen. 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 Christianity is a journey. We are walking. You may be sitting here, but you are in a journey. You are taking steps towards your destiny. Amen. You are taking steps towards what God has said before you. Amen. Amen. As you take those steps, you are bound to miss a step. And you are bound to fall. Or you are bound to triple. And you almost fall. But what do you do when you are in that situation? Do you remain there? No. You rise up. Most of us, I think, when we were born, we were all couldn't walk, right? First day you, 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 you were born, you couldn't walk. But there was a time, one year or so, others earlier than one year, you know, my, they tell me I walked at nine months, but others earlier than, than, you know, a year, they start walking. But when you start walking, when you take your first step, your body is not balanced. You start walking, you triple, you fall. But if you're scared of falling, you will never walk. You will be stuck there. But our idea in this Christian walk is that God is in the business of moving us from one level to another. As you move from the level that you were at, you're bound to face the kind of resistances that are there. But it doesn't mean that you will stay there where you were because now you have tripled, you are, not af you are now afraid of the next step. It means you have to rise up and you move to the next level. The scripture that we have been reading, I hope everyone now knows it by head. Amen. I'm going to share it now. <laughs> Psalm 37, verse 23 to 24. And my focus is on verse 24 today, right? The Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. We are all righteous, but as long as you have accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have been given the gift of righteousness. The steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. Then this is the part <laughs> that sometimes we don't read. We just want to quote the first part. That's the part that I want to speak to us about today. And that's the part that's going to determine whether you uphold the decision that you made when you came to Christ. That's the part that's going to help us to keep going and say, I am not going to draw back. I'm not going to give up in faith. No matter the challenges that I'm facing, no matter what situation the enemy is bringing in my life, I'm going to hold on because this is what the word of God says. Amen. Let me read it. It says, though he fall, he shall not be utterly, utterly cast down. For the Lord, not your sister, for the Lord, not your friend. I'm telling you about this, not another person, because that person gets tired when they uphold you. For the Lord upholds him with his hands. What a powerful promise. Amen. 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 There's another scripture. <laughs> Amen. I know we come here, we always think we are perfect, you know. But we are not perfect. That's why I said in the beginning, we can only come before God and God knows us. God knows me more than anyone else. Even the closest people in my life may not know me. But God knows everything about me. So Proverbs 24 verse 16 says, For a righteous man may fall seven times and rise again. But the wicked shall fall by calamity. Let us pray. Father, we want to thank you for your words this morning. Thank you that we have hope that King of Glory, we are God, who is at work in our lives. Lord, as we know that we have different journeys, different destinies, oh God, that you have set for us, different, oh God, almighty path that you have set for each and every one of us. Lord, as we pray this morning, we thank you that your word says as we walk, Lord Almighty, in this journey of faith, if it happens that we fail, my Father, my God, and we fall, we will not be like those that draw back unto petition, but we will hold on unto the work or the promise that you have with us, that you will surely hold us up. 
We will be worried about you, God, coming through to save us because you are a God who will never leave us nor forsake us. Thank you, King of Glory, for assuring us, even in the different challenges that we're facing. Thank you for assuring us, Lord, that we will, we, we may stumble, we can stumble, but we will not be utterly destroyed. We will not fall in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that even as we hear, listen to your word, we are going to be encouraged to continue to walk on, to continue to place on, to continue to not look at the circumstances because we walk not by sight but by faith in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you Lord in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Did I say happy women's month to the ladies? Happy women's month. Ah, you don't you don't respond like uh, you mean it. Happy women's month ladies. We thank God we are women. Amen. Amen. We are, you know, we, we, we were created by God himself. Amen. Amen. We, we, we are loved by God. The Bible says we are wonderfully and fearfully made by God. Let no one undermine you as a woman, as a child of God. Remember that God is faithful. God still speaks to women. God still uses women. No matter what you have done in the past. Amen. Amen. God still loves you. Save him, continue to love him. Amen. I see the gentlemen are jealous. When is men's month, guys? Let's... <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> God still love you, gentlemen. Amen. We just want to honor these women. It's, it's a South African thing. It's a women's month. What can we do? We have to be honored. Amen. I guess, I guess, I guess there's a scriptural alignment to this. Amen. You know, the Bible says we are the weaker vessels. I think even the men, even if they are not uh, honored and pampered, and even if they, they don't get affected that much. Amen. But Tinanja, we need it. Yeah? We are the visa vessel. We need to be told now and then, you know, that you are important. Amen. I hope the young guys and the married ones are taking notes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Let's remember that. Let's not do it on Women's Month only. Do it every day when you when your time is right uh, to get smuggled uh, right in that book. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So I'm talking about the fact that in the Christian walk we will face stumbles. We may be found facing stumbles. Why? Because the enemy is not happy about the decision that you made. You know, I was trying to think about stumbles yesterday as I was as preparing to send this message to uh, this message to the leadership. I was asking myself, what are the stumbles that people face? You know, a stumble is something that is there to block your way, right? It's there to, it appears like it is there to actually limit you. But in actual fact, it's not actually a hindrance. It appears like a hindrance. It appears like now it has come to finish you. Let me tell you a story. That's one day, I think it was in 2016, I was, I was supposed to attend a funeral of one of the ladies that had passed on in the program that I was working. I went out of it. I left home at 3, I think 3 a.m. We're supposed to pick people up at 4. I was driving a bike at that time. So we get there, and when we get there, um, everyone gets into the car, and now it's about to go. I'm asking people, do you guys know where we are going? Everyone says, no, we don't know, we just follow each other. And I'm like, I don't drive like that. I don't just follow people. I want to put in my GPS. And I get out of the car. And what did I do? I tripped, and I fell. When I tried to work, to stand up, I could feel good there is something, there is a pain that I felt that is different from like never before. <sighs> At that point I knew something was wrong, like my ankle had actually literally broken. Some people came with their first aid, tried to do this and that, it didn't work. Okay, fine, everyone proceed to the funeral, I end up in the, in the hospital, uh, cut story short, I am walking today. <laughs> With two legs, even though I've got two. So what am I trying to say? Sometimes the enemy will bring in things that will block when you walk. But it doesn't mean that you'll never walk again. Amen. It doesn't mean that your destiny is limited. Amen. I was looking last week, I was watching the funeral gaga gaga ga, 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 the late. And I was watching because I really love her, you know, and I love the work that she does. 
she was doing when she was alive. Amen. I was looking at Uba Bukumbi when, when he rose up to speak. He's now in a wheelchair. She, he stood up. <laughs> and I'm thinking about this right now to say, the enemy might have felt duty by amputation of the leg. It's the end of his life. Yeah. It's the end of his ministry. Those that follow him know what we are talking about. He's a powerful man of God. You know, he, 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 he doesn't end there. He was there speaking. The enemy did not silence him. Why? Because it's a stumble that comes, but it doesn't mean it's the end of it all. The generation that we face nowadays is that when people face challenges, you think about ending your life. Yeah. You think about depression, you think it's the end of it all. Yes, it's one module that you have failed, but does that mean that is the end of the life? Yeah. No. In my whole life, you know, when I went from high school up to, I was able to progress until first year at university. And I took all the courses, I failed one module. And you know, in our time, the results were not sent to you privately, guys. The poppy act was not active. <laughs> like, it was everywhere. I was the class rep. It was on the notice board results. Everyone, I go there and I find my results. Oh, you have a supplement. Do you know how that shatters you? I could have chosen, but no, I'm going to, 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 to drop out now. I'm not going to write my supplementary exam. But I thank God by that time, not knowing what I do, I went and I said for my sub-exam, and the results came and I passed. Amen. So you know what I'm saying? There is a journey that God has set for us. There are stumbles. Amen. The stumbles come just to distract you. Some of us are stumbled by our blessings. God gives you a source of income, or God gives you a child. Now you can't come to church because this child is noise. Who's of a kitchen all over the place? The blessing that God has given you is now becoming like sort of a stamp in your life. Huh? You think now, you then treat God like an ambulance. When the money is finished, when the job is finished, now you remember there is prayer and fasting, there is Wednesday prayer, and there is ladies group on Thursday. Now you are committed, now we know she has problems. <laughs> she has prayer points. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Sometimes blessings and positive things come and become a stumble. But I'm here to say, rise up, child of God. Rise up. Don't keep walking. Don't let these things that God has blessed you with to limit you. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter the title that they give you, whether you become president or minister or whatever you are. You're still a child of God. You still have to follow the processes of God. You still have to answer when it comes to, you know, a, a, a judgment day. You have to be accountable. It doesn't matter whether you are promoted from the deep married day to wherever God has elevated you. You still have to walk right before God. There are no sins that are better than other sins. Sin is a sin. And one of the things that keep us going back is sin. I'm not here to condemn us, but I'm here to say to us, if you get used to habits, and if you get used to bad habits, they become a standing book. I remember at one time, uh, my husband was preaching and he was saying, deal with your weaknesses before the enemy, the, 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 before you get exposed. God allows us to deal with our weaknesses. Those sins, you know, that those black spots, those areas, maybe it's habitual lying, maybe it's stealing, taking things without permission is stealing. You don't have to go to pick and pay. <laughs> like there are things in the house of God who just like check with the person next to you. Jealous and is still sin. You know, there are those small things. Small things that we think, ah, it, ah it's better. Maybe I didn't make by anyone, I didn't rap anyone, I'm better. Sin is sin. There is no sin that's better. So those things are there to stumble you. The moment you want to take a step forward, the devil is asking you, hey, yesterday, you, 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 you. This is what you did. The sin that is there to stumble, to make you stumble. But I'm saying to us, it's normal because the Bible is saying a righteous man falls seven times. Those things that you don't want any Zalwane to know about, you know, that you don't want uh, Christians to know about. Those things, I think 90% of them are not aligned to the word of God. 90% hmm? of them, those things, that maybe some of you, even those messages that are in your phone right now, if we were to say bring phones here, yeah, you start to want to go to delete because you don't want anyone. Most of the language or most of the things that you, are, that you have there, they're not aligned to the word of God. 
Some people have ended up putting passwords that are not known by anyone. Because there are some skeleton things, skeleton things, skeleton things. May God help us as we walk in this faith to deal with our skeletons. We target. I did psychology. They say for 21 days, if you do the same thing every day for 21 days, it becomes part of you. If you, if you have a problem, maybe you know that you are not a person who is very good in telling the truth. Every day, evaluate and ask my own like, please and please. You know, I like to exaggerate things. <laughs> I like to speak things that are not true or things that are not, you know. Ask God to help you. And you get to that point after 21 days, now you know how to tell the truth. Amen. Amen. It's those kind of small things that come and they stumble us. Amen. Loss, death can also be a stumble. You know, I, I remember this year is 26 years since my father passed away. Oh, passed on. Amen. He passed away on the 17th of August. And it, it, it used to be like a thing, whenever there is that kind of, you know, like reminder that comes, that reminds you, you lost your father, you know, uh, it, 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 it actually haunts you somehow. You have that pain, you know, and you're asking yourself when everyone else says they are dead and you're like, God, but why? That thing stumbles you and if you rise, don't rise up from it. Death can stumble you, you know, when you lose something, it can, I know I'm a person who, who, when I lose something, I, I, you know, I can't operate until I find it. <laughs> I really want to find that thing. Even sometimes I wake up at night thinking about that thing that I didn't find, which I put on the table when someone decided to check. I am that person. You know how it is when you lose something? That thing can become, you can't even progress. Now you are thinking, where is this thing? Trials also come and become like stumbles. You know? Temptations become like stumbles. You're like, I'm in this house. There is 20 million. It's dark. There is no one who knows about it. The owner of the house. Do I take it? Is it God's blessing? <laughs> eh? It's time, Muslim. You know, I've never had this amount. That thing is there to what? Stumble you. <laughs> it may be actually an opportunity that the enemy wants to destroy you completely. Destroy your faith. Amen. Amen. Friends and loved ones can become a stumble. Amen. I've heard people quite often, and I think I've done it too, when the phone rings, hey, Lola, stumble. <laughs> what does she want now? <laughs> you know, we all go through that. These are stumbles. And answered prayers can also become stumbles. I've been praying God, I've been fasting, I pay my tithes, I give, I, but why? I've been asking you for just this one thing. It can just become a stumble. Amen. Amen. We are walking, we face stumbles as children of God. Our own children can also become stumbles. Our own mothers, our own parents can also become stumbles. Your own workmates, your own colleagues, they become stumbles. The enemy uses anyone to just distract you from the what God has called you for. Amen. There is a scripture that I like so much. Romans 8, 35 to 39. I, I think I quoted the wrong version. The version, okay, it's fine. It says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword, as it is written, for my sake we are killed day long. Are you alive, people? Yeah. Do you face things that want to kill you? Yeah. We are killed. That's the intention of the enemy. The enemy comes to kill still. He wants to kill. There is a destiny that God has given. He has in store for you. And what the devil wants to do, just to kill it. You may be walking like you're continuing, but some things may have been destroyed and, and, and dead by now. Because the devil knows that I've killed a zero. She will just go to church and sit down and walk the benches or the chairs and then go. Because the devil just killed your desire to serve at God's house. Why? Because one point when I was a one I was me, I'll never do anything in church. I'll just go to church. But I'll go there and I'll just sit. Because me, I don't want to cross anyone's path. Have you had Christians like that? Stumble. Amen. 
things are killed already. You know, as I was reading this portion of scripture, I'm like, there are dead things that we need to claim back in our lives. Your prayer life is killed. The enemy just keeps you busy when it's time to pray. Or in the morning, it just keeps you busy, and then you leave home. You realize later, when you are facing a temptation, ah, did I even pray today? Just killed your time. To take us to understand that in this walk we can stumble, but we will not fall. We have to rise up. If I didn't pray today, what does it mean? Tomorrow I will wake up and I will pray. Even if on Tuesday I wake up and I get too busy and I go to work and I forget to pray, on Wednesday I'll wake up and pray. I'll be like, ah, very big Some people will be like, ah, it's the end of week, I'll pray on Sunday. Even if it's been January till now, we're reading scriptures. The enemy killed your desire to read the Bible. It's not too late. Rise up. Read the Bible. Apply the word of God in your life. We want God to continue to order our steps. When you are now there, you have tripped, right? And you are refusing to move from that level where you have tripped. You are refusing to move. You are refusing to stand up. I once said God does not operate like evil spirits that just force you. I mean, to just rise up. <laughs> Some people are doing things that they are not able to do. They are not under normal circumstances. Will not be. They will not do them. You know, because of an evil spirit that's operating in them. But Umoyongwele does not force us. He works with our will. So there are destinies that have been killed by the enemy. Amen. That we need to claim back. The Bible says, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God. So I'm saying to us today, whatever stumble that you have, whether it's personal or it's family or it's, you know, whatever thing that has been disturbing you for a while, that you have been waiting for God to come through, I want to tell you that you have conquered. Amen. The Bible says we are more than conquerors. Amen. There is nothing that can separate us from the love of God. Amen. You just have to believe that God is able to do it. Amen. Challenge him with his word. Amen. When he says nothing is impossible with him, he says nothing. Amen. So it's up to you to say, God, you say nothing is impossible with you. This thing Amen. is appearing impossible. Amen. Sort it out. Amen. I believe your word. Amen. Stumbles appear impossible, guys. I'm talking from experience. There are things that appear impossible. Yeah. But it will take you to say even death on itself is not impossible with God. God can still rise you up from a dead point of view. Amen. God can still activate your spiritual life in a point where you have been struggling. Amen. Amen. God can still help you with those habits that you think they have been part of you. Amen. He says he's a God who orders the steps of the righteous man. Amen. He's the same God who's able to hold you with his mighty hand. Amen. God comes in and holds you up. Amen. When you think me, I can't do it. There are times where I pray, I say, God, on my own, I can't. Amen. I just depend on you. Amen. I just trust you. And then you see the hand of God coming and saying, shh. Amen. And then you ask yourself, but I was there. Yeah. But I'm here. Yes. How did I get here? Yes. It's because there is a mighty hand Amen. that held me up in my weakness point. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So I want to encourage us. There is no one who is perfect in faith. Amen. Each person has got their own stumble. Amen. But it's not up to you to be busy going around looking at other people's stumbles. Amen. It's up to you to look at your own stumbles and say, God, help me. Amen. This is my area that I need your divine intervention. The devil is using this to block me to my destiny. But I'm going to rise up even from this point. And I trust God to carry me. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 There is nothing that is possible with God. Amen. Why am I saying that? Every detail of our life is under God's control. Amen. Every detail. The things that we even don't understand. You know, uh, even here, there are organisms eh, that, are, that are moving and we are not seeing them. Every detail. Enzymes. Anything that you can think of that you are not even seeing practically. God 
don't even know the number of hair that is in your head. That's how God knows the detail of us. Amen. Amen. He even knows everything that is worrying you. He even knows what's going to happen to you next year. Amen. In 2030. Maybe next year is too early. God already knows your destiny. He knows where you're going to work for those that are not working yet. He knows exactly the job that he has set for you. Those that are not married, God knows who's going to marry you. Whether you might not know right now or you might be thinking is this one, but God knows. He's concerned about every detail. Yes? He's concerned about every detail of our lives. He already knows what's going to happen this afternoon, tomorrow, next week, end of this year. He already knows every detail of your life. And it's up to you to inquire of him. You know, Mila, if I were to discover there's someone who knows something about me that I don't know, what do I do? I'll bother that person <laughs> until they tell me. <laughs> they know me in a job. I'm not good with surprises. I'm good at surprising others. But if you tell me there's a surprise, I want to know now. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Why am I saying that? There is all the other secret things that God knows about your life. Amen. When you stay connected to him, he will reveal them to you. Amen. You will know it. When it happens, it's like it has happened before. Why? Because God has every detail of us. Yes. Amen. So for us, we need to stay connected to him. The detail of God's plan about our life is in his word. Amen. It's there in the word. Everything that you have questions about is there in the word of God. If you don't know, ask any other person, they will tell you. You know, let's research together. What does the Bible say about this? There is every answer about our lives. And God reveals these things to us as his children. And God cannot just appear revealing things to us when we don't have a straight walk of saying, God, as you order me, order my steps, direct me. Not my will, oh Lord, <laughs> but your will prevails in my life every day. I would today, I'm a Christian, I'm doing the will of God, I'm asking God, I'm directed tomorrow, when it suits me, I'm doing other things, then whenever those things don't work, I come back again. That's not how it works. God works with us as we continue along, aligning, amen, to his will, amen, hallelujah. There's another thing that I want us to know, is that God takes pleasure in our struggles to walk in holiness. He sees your desire to walk in holiness. He sees where you are like, ah, you write to from Kolela because ah, you know what? After all, this is normal. I will those. I can't use I mean, I mean, oh, actually, I'm better than it. You know how we always get comfort in other people's weaknesses? And you rejoice. You're like, ah, but I'm better, I'm better, I'm better than this one. Ah, this one doesn't pray. I mean, at least I pray. You know? But God takes pleasure in your struggle towards holiness. When you say, I sit down and I keep time for my God, He takes pleasure in that. He takes pleasure in your consistency, you know, in, in aligning to His word. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. And I put, deliberately put that picture, amen, I hope it's showing. It's a path. We are all walking. Please remember, we are not walking at the same pace. You have your own pace. I have my own pace. We are not competing. You have a path that you have to fulfill. I have a path that I have to fulfill. Some things may be normal to me, but God says don't do them yourself. Why? Because there is a specific path that God has set for you. And each path is leading us to holiness. Holiness is one, but our role is different, all of us, in this path. So run your race. Amen. Amen. If it's normal for you to do some things, it's okay. God has given you to that. When you see other people, you know, I was even thinking about this. Obuti, if you had seen me 20 years late, like 20 years ago, when I got into Christ, till now we bent our trousers. We were told, Obuti, I, a trouser is a route to hell. A woman does not wear trousers. It was okay for that time. Amen. Amen. We, we, as, I was, as I was thinking about this, and I was saying, there's a path that each one of us has. If God tells you, there are still people who don't have televisions in their homes. It's fine. There's people who don't go to the internet. It's okay. 
It's for them. Don't go around saying, hey, you and I are not a Christian because you are listening to this music, you are devilish worship. Don't go around. It's their time. Allow them. God will deal with them. When God says this, don't touch. He will make sure you won't touch. Amen. Amen. So it's a pace that each and every one of us has to walk. There are basic things that we cannot argue about. Things like coming to church. We can't be telling you that you have to come to church every Sunday. Right? Go and read Romans 10 verse 24 to 25. And then you come back and tell us whether it's right to be absent in God's house. No. You know? If you have no valid reason of not being at God's house, don't make it a habit. It becomes a lifestyle. One day you will come, you want to go to God when there is challenges. It's not going to work. Amen. There are things that are standard. Reading the Bible is a standard thing. Amen. Amen. Don't, don't go around asking people which are hard, but I have the work on Sunday. I don't have time. I'm studying. The Bible, we have to keep consistent in this path. I get it. We are, we are, we are, we are, we are, we are, we are working. We are, we are walking, and as you walk, what you feed your mind is what is, is going to come out of you. If you take a sponge and you put soap on it, there will be bubbles that come out. But if you put water, there is what? Water that come out, right? Anything that, feeds, that is fed, fed unto your spirit will come out. If you are used to listening to a piano, it will be do 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 all the time. When people start to talk to you, you respond in my piano, they will pick it. Why am I saying that? It's, it's, it's like it's, it's in you. Amen. Something that's in you. If you are used this to people that are swearing, when I greet you one day, you will swear. Because they are used to life of swearing. I'm telling you, it will come as a slip of the tongue. Because that's in you. You are hanging around with people that are swearing all the time. And they are fitting into your spirit. So you have to fit yourself as you walk. Fit yourself with the right things. It's a path. And when you walk, I've seen people that take part in Olympics. They prepare. And I believe we all have to prepare for this walk. There are things that you have to let go and say, this I won't do. You can't be running and you are wearing a coat and you are wearing three clothes in there and it's heavy and you want to run and you want to be the first position. Have you ever seen the people that run? The type of clothes they wear. Things that won't become a challenge as they run. Things that will help them to get to the actual goal of winning the race. Imagine you want to do patching the brace, you wear stilettos. It's not appropriate, right? You go, you wear three types of jackets. It's cold, you wear a jacket. You know, you take a hat, you put it on, you put on a shirt, and you are like, I'm here. <laughs> oh no, Max, get set. Go. They will all laugh at you because you are not appropriate, right? You are not appropriate for the, for the, for the race. So what am I saying to us? This has been created for you. You have to prepare. There are people that have gone before us in faith that help us to prepare to what God has said for us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The other thing that I want to say is that God designs our trials so that they don't destroy us. Never think that I'm finished to war. That word will never be a part of you. When something happens, it's just there for a season. It's not there to destroy you. Amen. It's just there because it's a stumble. Remember I said it's a stumble. It's just there to just distract you. But it doesn't mean you stop. It doesn't mean that you are destroyed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God will not allow anything to permanently destroy our relationship with him. Not even death itself. Not even anything that has got a strong connection can destroy our connection with God. Amen. He knows the way that we should take. When we test us, amen. He says, oh brother, come on, talk about the gold last week. I almost thought him, and remember I was telling him last week that you, you, you actually took what I wanted to say. It's a test. It's meant to purify. It's meant to take off those things that are part of you, that have become a part of you, that are not supposed to be there. That will disturb you when you get to a level where God has set you. Amen. So it's a season. Amen. During the worst moment, amen, it's the time that we need to rise up and take our faith. It's the time where we need to continue to say, God, help me. Remember, I said he holds us with his right hand. I mean, there are times where I'm like, oh, midnight prayer, will I wake up? But I, I say, God, 
you hold me with your right hand. I am tired, I've been at work, I came here, I did this and I did that, but I know that you hold me with my right hand, with your right hand. You will uphold me. In that point where you think it's your worst moment, remember that there is a hand. That is not like a Mosa, where she will also get tired and say, I walk on your own when I now am full of all the time. You know, I also get tired. I hold Jade and sometimes I'm like, ah, go and play when because I also get tired. But God does not. He can hold all of us at one time. He's not limited. So now we can only hold two people. A limited number of people that we can hold. But God is not limited. His hand is not limited. So remember whatever challenge that you have, it's not there to destroy you. Amen. Amen. God does not design the trials so that they, they destroy us. The stumbles, they are processes of life. Amen. Amen. It's Women's Month. I was in the labor ward, I think one year, seven months ago, six, one year, five months ago. I was there. You know, it's Women's Month. It's a process. You know? I think if women had given up, given birth, we wouldn't be having wrong people on earth. You know? <laughs> the earth would become empty. Amen. Giving up because of the pain that is there. Abu Dhabi, there is pain there. Pregnancy is not a joke. Those that have been pregnant know that. Amen. Sometimes you want the meat, you love meat, but in the pregnancy, the smell of the meat is not nice. You don't eat it. It's a process. Amen. So what am I saying to us? There are things that God has designed, that there are processes that we go through, but that doesn't mean that we remain there. When there is a child, when a child is born, people get excited. We forget about all the pain that we have been through. We forget about the boils that we had when we were pregnant. <laughs> we forget about all the other things that we did not like. Amen. Amen. We forget about the pain. Now we are excited about the little one that has come. Why? Because the process. I believe that you understand that each and every one of us is a gem. You have your own pregnancy to carry. There are things that you will be forced to not eat. It's just for a season. When you get to the right destination that God has set you, you will know that these things will just double. If I had remained there, if Joseph had remained in the pit, what was going to happen? Strive brothers, when he was not going to enter palace. If he had remained in the prison crying and, and murmuring about how Umfaz Gafaro did this thing, this evil woman. Some of us are holding on to things that we should let go. Amen. They've become part of you. You're blaming that person for a long time. You're blaming the situation for a long time. Heaven are this country. Heaven are this. Mm. Hey? This heat, this cold, it's, it's now summer. So the winter is over, you're always saying, ah, but this year, hey, it became cold there, yeah, I got that. You still holding on to that. Amen. So I want to say to us, these stumbles are just there to distract us, but we are not going to be utterly destroyed. You have to work out your salvation. Amen. Work out, face them, hold on. Use the word of God. Amen. Amen. We will not utterly fall because God will not let go. That's one thing that I've known about my God. God does not let go. It's the other way around. We are the ones that let go. We are the ones that give up. But God has never given up on anyone. He doesn't give up on anyone. So let us understand this, that our struggles are necessary. So we need to fight on. How do you fight? Prayer. How do you fight? Speak the right things. How do you fight? Keep aligning to the will of God. You don't go there and people just uh, back come and you say, you fight back. You fight with the right weapons. Amen. Amen. Your father in heaven will never forget you. Hang in there. I know you have prayed for something. It's now the eighth month and you believe God for something this year. It's the eighth month. You have believed God for a job. Some people get job on the eighth month. Some people get jobs in December. I was believing God for a job in December in, in 2017. I went for interviews in 2016. But, I think it was the job that I'm in now. I got the offer letter, I think, on the last week when I had actually going on leave. 
You know that last week about December, I think the Friday of it, when the year was coming to an end, and I'm thinking, oh, we will apply again, maybe Google March, that's when we'll get new jobs, but God had another plan. Amen. Amen. You hang in there, God will never forget you. There are things that we all planned this year. Amen. And one thing that I also want to say is that your future is assured. It's not uncertain, it's assured. So you have to work on. You know your future is assured. Amen. It's assured. It's, it's, a, it's a done deal. When something is assured, it's a done deal. There's no questions about it. It's assured. What you believe in God for is assured. Amen. So in conclusion, amen, I want to say to us, let's continue to come back to God as we walk. I know the stumbles are there to just bring us down. But when you feel like you're tired of your sin, run to Jesus. Ask the Holy Spirit for help. When you feel like you want a new start in life, run to Jesus. Ask the Holy Spirit to help. I wish I had another answer, but the answer that I have is that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous Amen. run onto it and they are safe. If you feel like a failure, I know the world has got this thing of making us feel like failures. Our loved ones remind us of the bad things that we've done in the past and they keep reminding us of our weaknesses. Amen. If you feel like a failure, run back to Jesus. Hallelujah. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you and change your testimony. Amen. Amen. If you fear the future and you feel like your future is uncertain, run to Jesus. Ask the Holy Spirit for help. Amen. Amen. If you need hope and encouragement and you say like Lento, I can't even explain it to anyone because this person might not even understand me. Maybe they have not gone through this that I'm going through. Run to Jesus. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. If you want to see Jesus come through in your life, you don't just say, wait and you run to him. It doesn't operate like I'm waiting. But just run to him. You know where he's found. He's found at your altar. He's found in his house. He's found everywhere where you are. Run to him. Amen. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. You may stumble but you will not fall. You may stumble, but you will not be utterly destroyed. Amen. May God bless you. Amen. Oh yes, oh yes, guys. That was another powerful service from us, Jesus Church. I just want to encourage you to watch more of our services as we'll be posting weekly. And I encourage you guys to like, subscribe, and comment. Comment, guys, comment. But any, anywho, Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week.